Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. As some of you guys know, I just moved cross country from Colorado to Florida, and before we could even get settled into our new house, uh, Hurricane Irma came barreling towards us. So my wife and I decided to play it safe and evacuate, and that led us to a discussion on which vehicle we should take. Should we take the Tesla or should we take the shitty gasoline car? And I'm sure you could tell which camp I was uh, rooting for. But we ended up sitting down and kind of putting together a pros and cons list of, you know, evacuating with a traditional gasoline car or evacuating with a Tesla. And this is what we came up with. So some of the obvious pros of evacuating with a gasoline car are that, you know, there's gasoline stations everywhere. Uh, you know, they're basically on every corner going down the interstate. They're at almost every exit. So there's gasoline places you can go anywhere where the superchargers are limited in location. You know, there's set locations, you have to go to supercharge. Uh, another pro of gasoline cars, they usually have a longer range. Uh, most gasoline cars get, I think, anywhere from probably 300 to 500 miles on a tank, uh, some even, you know, 600 plus. So you're not gonna have to stop and fill up as often in a gasoline car as you would a Tesla. You know, the longest range, 100D on a Model S, I think gets like 330 miles. And also, it's faster to pump gas than it is to charge a battery. Now, let's talk about the cons of evacuating a gasoline car. So the, the first and the biggest, in my mind, is that there's a huge gas shortage going on. Uh, if you look on Gas Buddy or you're just driving around, you will see that there are tons of gas stations that have absolutely no gas. Uh, there are just a handful of gas stations that still have gas in areas, and they usually have extremely long lines. You know, some people are saying they're waiting in line 30 minutes to an hour to get gas. So, while yes, there are gas stations all over the place, uh, finding a gas station that actually has gas uh, is getting harder and harder. And you might have to be waiting quite a while to fill up. Also, during an evacuation, a lot of times traffic might be stopped on the interstate or crawling, you know, going really slow. And if you're driving a gasoline car, you're still using a lot of gas just to idle your engine, you know, to keep your AC on so you don't die of heat, you're using a lot of power. Whereas a Tesla, if you're not you know, moving, if you're stopped and the climate control's on, it's using power, but not nearly as much as when you're driving. So you're not gonna run out of energy as quickly as you'll burn through gas uh, idling on the interstate. On to the part of the list that I like the most, the pros of evacuating a Tesla. First, free supercharging. Now, Gas prices have not skyrocketed because during a natural disaster, it's against the law in most places to price gouge. So gas prices aren't, you know, outrageous or anything, but still can't beat free supercharging. So uh, free supercharging, definitely a, a pro for evacuating a Tesla. Another advantage of evacuating a Tesla, autopilot. I pretty much refuse to drive anywhere uh, without autopilot. I mean, I, <laughs> I've just turned into, you know, spoiled little brat when it comes to autopilot. I just can't live without it. It's a no-brainer. I'm not going to evacuate uh, if I don't have autopilot. You know, I, I'd i rather hunker down. <laughs> Another advantage of evacuating a Tesla is camper mode. Now, there were absolutely no hotels available basically anywhere along the interstate. So a lot of people ended up just pulling over at rest stops and sleeping in their car at the rest stop. Tesla, you can put it into camper mode and run your AC and sleep in your car and, you know, you will lose some range, but it's not a lot. You know, you'll be able to sleep overnight and wake up in the morning and continue on your way. So that's a definite advantage in a situation like this that you could sleep in your car. Another advantage of evacuating a Tesla is that if the place you go is also in a gas shortage, you don't have to worry about it. As long as, you know, the friend's house that you're staying at has power, you can just plug into a 120 outlet and charge up there. You're only going to get three to four miles of range per hour, but if you're there two or three days, uh, you'll fully recharge in that time. Another nice advantage of the Tesla is how much space you have. You have the lower trunk area that you can load that up with a bunch of stuff, uh, things that you don't have to get to during the evacuation, and then you pile up stuff in the back with your seats down. You can fit a lot of stuff in the car. Plus, you got the front also. So you get a lot more storage space in a Tesla than you do in a traditional gasoline car. Now, there are a few cons of evacuating with a Tesla. The first is that 
you have shorter range in a Tesla than you do a gasoline car. Uh, another con is that it takes longer to supercharge than it does to pump gas. So it takes you know 30 minutes to an hour to charge up at a supercharger. However, you know I don't really see that as much of a con because you're going to want to stop every few hours anyways and grab a bite to eat, you know, just get out, stretch your legs, go to the bathroom. And by the time you do that, the car's charged up and you get back on the road and go to the next supercharger. So I didn't think that um, supercharging is really that much of an inconvenience. Now, speaking of superchargers, there is another con of supercharging and that's they have limited locations. You know, superchargers are only every 100, 150 miles along the interstate. And so you can skip superchargers. Um, you can leapfrog them or you can stop at every supercharger. But, you know, you're kind of limited as to the options right around the supercharger. Uh, you can't just pull over whenever you want. It can be a little annoying that you're kind of limited, uh, you know, where you can stop based on superchargers. But in most instances, that's not really that big of a deal. One question that I got a lot from people when I told them I was evacuating with the Tesla is, what are you going to do if the power's out when you're trying to get back? And that's a great question. Now, if the power's out, obviously the superchargers aren't working, but that also means that most gas stations don't work either. Uh, some gas stations do have backup generators and they can run, uh, you know, pump gas when the power's out, but the vast majority of them don't. One advantage that you have with a Tesla is using the navigation, you can hit the little lightning bolt icon, it'll show you all the superchargers and destination chargers in the area. And with superchargers, it'll tell you how many stalls are being occupied but it'll also tell you if it's out of service. So right after the hurricane passed through, a lot of the superchargers in Florida were out of service. So you could not have immediately driven back through Florida uh, right after the hurricane. But Tesla got those back online very quickly. The Tesla superchargers, you know, they require so much power, they're really tied into the main power infrastructure. It's not like a house that's way down on the end of the grid. Uh, houses are, the last thing to get power back because you know they have to fix stuff from the power plant to your house you know they start the power plant and they fix stuff and the superchargers are close to the power plant on the the grid so there's some of the stuff that gets you know put back the soonest now there's a couple advantages to a tesla even if you don't evacuate and that's because the car has a huge battery so if you charge up your car before you lose power then you can run, you know, recharge your cell phones, tablets, laptop, anything off your car battery without having, you know, that big of an impact on your, your range. So you can charge those devices. The other really cool thing, you can, you know, run your car in the garage. So while your car's, you know, safely in the garage out, uh, you know, away from the storm, you could sleep in your car or just hang out in the car and run the AC to kind of cool off when you don't have power. And uh, that would be huge because Florida is hot as balls as it is <laughs> and uh, uh, it's disgustingly humid here. So being able to cool off and get in the car for a little bit would probably make a world of difference if you were out pa power for a while. So that's uh, definitely a good thing to consider. Another reason why I was pushing hard to evacuate with the Tesla is that I just didn't want the Tesla to get destroyed. You know, I, I love this car and was not ready to uh, see it get destroyed from a hurricane. Hopefully none of you guys find yourself in a situation like I did where, you know, you had to evacuate from some pending natural disaster. But if you do, uh, hopefully my list of pros and cons kind of helps you out. And now you're confident enough to evacuate with a Tesla uh, as opposed to taking a uh, gasoline car and you know, dealing with that crap. Also, if you are considering buying a Model S or a Model X, then don't forget to use a referral code. You can save $1,000 off the price of the Tesla, plus you'll get unlimited supercharging for as long as you own the car. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Uh, feel free to use my referral. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. Or if you have a buddy that owns a Tesla, um, make them let you test drive their car. And if they do, they're a good friend and use their referral. <laughs> but uh, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.